We've talked about powerful moves in Dragon Ball Z before. We've talked about powers that can end entire universes, in fact. While deleting a universe is the best way to take out a bad guy, is it the most pragmatic? The most effective? We'd like to think that the Dragon Ball franchise has a bit more depth than that. Which is why today we'll be looking at the most effective techniques in Dragon Ball. To make it onto this list, the move has to be effective while at the same time being practical and easy to use. Let's get started with the obvious. For a time, we thought Super Saiyan was the ultimate power level. When Goku first went Super Saiyan back in the Frieza saga, it was hyped up to be the most powerful form Goku could achieve. Then Gohan went Super Saiyan 2 and defeated Cell, and the bar was raised. So on and so forth until Dragon Ball Super, and we were introduced to the concept of Super Saiyan God, a new form with a ridiculous power level. As if that wasn't enough, we were then given Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, which includes going Super Saiyan while in Super Saiyan God form. Confusing, we know. Now, near the tail end of Dragon Ball Super, a new form emerged more powerful than the rest, and so powerful it threatened to rival the gods of destruction. Ultra Instinct Ultra Instinct is a technique where the consciousness is separated from the body and acts independently of the fighter's thoughts and emotions. Complicated? We know. It's said to be the most powerful state a fighter can ever be in. And only the angels have mastered this form. When Goku goes Ultra Instinct against Jiren, Beerus recognizes the full potential Goku has, calling it the State of the Gods. If any one of us could use instant transmission, we would never use modern transportation ever again. Instant transmission has the unique position of being the only move on this list that deals no damage. Don't let that bother you though, as a move like instant transmission has proven to be very powerful time and time again. Goku has used instant transmission to get in and out of sticky situations, and it is an excellent mobility technique for great follow-up attacks. One of the most famous uses of the move was during the Cell games. During Goku's fight with Cell, he powered up a Kamehameha and acted like he was aiming at the stage, which would have hit the onlookers and the planet Earth as well. At the last possible moment, Goku instant transmissioned right up close to Cell in no time for him to blast the bug man's top clean off. When Goku's not cutting alien cyborgs in half, he uses the technique freely to travel around to different places he's been before quickly. Sure, he still flies from location to location, but if he needs to stop by Bulma's or Kame House, then he'll just use the good old instant transmission and be there in the blink of an eye. You all knew this would be on the list. It's the one move that every anime fan knows. It's that one technique we all tried as a kid on the playground between our attempts to go Super Saiyan, the Kamehameha. Originally a technique invented by Master Roshi, he taught it to Goku, Krillin, and Yamcha, who in turn taught it to Gohan and Goten. Well, they all kind of just naturally picked it up. Roshi's training was mostly just deliveries and construction work. It's the big, bad, blue blast that's used to finish a fight or as a quick and effective blast to catch an opponent off guard. The amount of times the Kamehameha is used in the anime would warrant its own video. Since it is the first key technique used in the franchise, the Kamehameha holds a special place in the Dragon Ball canon. One might even say the move's just as important as the Dragon Balls themselves. Long after the show was ended, fans of the show still reminisce about the many crucial moments the Kamehameha saved the day and helped Goku or someone else win the battle. It's safe to say that the Kamehameha might be the most essential move in the entire anime. However, we have 12 other moves to talk about, so buckle up! Now for a move that is larger than life! No move showcases the unity the fighters of Dragon Ball have quite like the Spirit Bomb. It's the anime equivalent of using the power of friendship as an attack. Even if it doesn't kill, not many have walked away from a spirit bomb unscathed and usually means a fight is nearing its conclusion, or is just flat out over. By gathering the energy of the entire planet, the user can unleash one devastating attack that is very hard to avoid and is pretty devastating. While it may be the least practical move in Dragon Ball, the results speak for themselves. Taught to Goku by King Kai, the spirit bomb is a move largely used by Goku. Though there have been times other characters have taken on the big blue ball. In the Saiyan saga, it was up to Krillin to take the spirit bomb and use it on Vegeta. The very first spirit bomb wasn't the big, massive ball we know today, however. It was smaller and was more of a white blast of energy. While it may not be the most pragmatic technique on this list, it is, however, a great finisher and a Dragon Ball Z classic. Perhaps the closest thing Vegeta will get to using a Kamehameha. 
Final Flash is one of Vegeta's signature moves and is characterized by being an extremely dense wave of ki. The theatrics of this attack leave a lot to be desired. Every time the attack is used, it takes more and more energy and time to build up. When Vegeta's building up the final flash, electricity flies everywhere, similar to when Gohan achieved Super Saiyan 2. If the attack is not properly aimed, it has the power of destroying planets, something that is of little consequence to Vegeta. This technique perfectly represents just who Vegeta is as a fighter. He prides himself on being the Prince of All Saiyans. But when it comes to fighting, he would pour all of his rage and insecurities into one violent and reckless attack. To his credit, the attack has paid off on more than one occasion. When he used it against Automageddon in Dragon Ball Super, it gave him the opening he needed to win. And like Goku, Trunks inadvertently learned the final flash and demonstrates it in his fight against Infinite Zamasu. Like father, like son, raging and screaming to solve their problems and maybe the universe. You could call the Gallic Gun the anti-Kamehameha. Vegeta's answer to Goku's most powerful technique is one of his own that has a similar stance and effect. Where the Kamehameha requires the user to cup their hands to the side and squat low, the Gallic Gun requires Vegeta to curl his fingers behind him at chest level before unleashing a purple key wave. The two key blasts first came to blows when Vegeta and Goku fought in the Saiyan Saga. He notes the two attacks seem evenly matched, with Goku having to use Kaioken times 3 to repel Vegeta's attack. Eventually, Goku overwhelms Vegeta's gun with a Kamehameha and Kaioken times 4. Since then, Vegeta has used the Gallic Gun in a few variations. The Gallic Gun can destroy a planet if enough energy is put into it. For the longest time, it seemed like the Gallic Gun was just Vegeta's move. However, in Dragon Ball Super, it's revealed Trunks picked up a lot more than the final flash from his daddy. He uses a powerful Gallic Gun to repel Zamasu's Holy Wrath attack. After seeing the Gallic Gun, it makes sense that Vegeta has never bothered to learn the Kamehameha. He doesn't need it. Okay, this is the last Vegeta move, we swear. This one is less of a technique and more of, well, a personification of Vegeta as a fighter. As lazy as it is, the Big Bang attack has seen some key uses. The attack itself is as simple as, well, a Big Bang attack. It's a spherical key blast that makes a large explosion on contact. The first time Vegeta uses the Big Bang attack was against Android 19, when Vegeta utterly trashed the robot and finished it off with the aforementioned Big Bang attack which left the android as just a head. From how it was executed, the name sounds clumsy and rushed, like Vegeta was struggling to come up with a name on the spot. And apparently Big Bang attack was the best he could come up with. In a show with moves like Special Beam Cannon, Big Bang Attack is not high up in the cool names list. We see the Big Bang Attack make a comeback in Super when Vegeta uses it to try and kill Frieza after his resurrection. However, he's unable to get it out before Frieza uses his Earthbreaker to destroy the planet. Personally, we prefer the Gallic Gun. It is at this point we come to everyone's favorite green slug man Piccolo. The Namekian warrior has perhaps the oddest moveset in the franchise. His notable moves include stretchy arms and various key attacks. However, the move we all know him for is the special beam cannon, or as it is more coolly known as the Mankanko Sapo. This special technique requires a bit of a charge up, but the result is a spiral death beam that drills through flesh and key alike. Piccolo developed this technique back in Dragon Ball and intended to use it on his then-rival Goku. The most famous instance of this attack was used in the early days of Dragon Ball Z, with the fight against Raditz. Piccolo used it to drill a hole through both Raditz and Goku, earning himself a sweet double kill. The special beam cannon wouldn't see much action except for a few moments in the DBZ films. It wasn't until Dragon Ball Super that the special beam cannon made a return when Piccolo took on Frost in the Universe 6 vs. Universe 7 tournament. While Piccolo may have used an uncharged version in the Resurrection F saga, the fully charged beam was used later on in the series. How about we look at our other human characters for a change? In a world populated with Saiyans, Namekians, and all other manner of alien and celestial beings, it's easy to forget the humans in Dragon Ball. Sure, the strongest humans in the franchise might be half-machine on the inside, but we still should not discount our Homo sapiens. They mattered in Dragon Ball… for a time. Moving right along, we'd like to talk about a character that is not often mentioned in discussions, Tien. Don't worry, Krillin's gonna make an appearance some point. Despite being a hardened warrior and trained martial artist, Ten Shinhan is often overlooked when it comes to power level. Despite Tien's lack of screen time, there is one technique that puts him in league with the big boys. The Tri-Beam, or the Shin Kikoho. By concentrating his key into a fine point, Tien can unleash a devastating attack. Despite him being human, he was able to use it to repel Second Form Cell, who easily stomped Android 17 and Piccolo. So that should give you a sense of how powerful it really is. When the moon hits your head like a big pizza pie. 
When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, it's actually a whirling blade of energy about to cut your head off. The Destructo Disc is one of Krillin's most powerful moves, and boy does it pack a wallop. Other characters have used this move, but for the sake of this list, let's just say it's a move Krillin is known for. Unlike Key Blasts, the Destructo Disc is a bladed key attack that is capable of cutting through the flesh of foes much more powerful than the wielder. Krillin used this move to cut off Frieza's tail, despite being almost ten times stronger than him. Of course, the Destructo Disc does have its limits. When he tried to use it on Perfect Cell, the Destructo Disc broke and didn't even leave a scratch. What makes this technique so dangerous is that whoever wields it can have it cut through foes leagues stronger than them. So if someone like Frieza uses the move, it could cut through almost anything, even him. The only real question is, why is this move not used more often? If it can cut through opponents with ease, you'd think Krillin or other characters would use it. When there's an evil doer in your neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Master Roshi. If there's someone bad without a look good, who are you gonna call? Ma Master, Master Roshi. With the evil containment wave, Roshi effortlessly contains all those evil spirits and demons. Also known as the Mafuba, the evil containment wave is a special technique that seals away evil spirits into a bottle or container with a demon seal. This technique has seen uses in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Super. Oddly enough, Future Trunks learns the technique in an attempt to seal away Zamasu. The technique is mainly used by Master Roshi, however, and used it in Dragon Ball in an attempt to seal away King Piccolo. Later on in Dragon Ball Super, during the Tournament of Power, Master Roshi got a lot more use from the technique. He was able to seal away Dekori and was almost successful in sealing away Magetta. However, Pross stopped him and Roshi accidentally sealed Vegeta. The Mafaba seals away evil no matter who it is. Tough break, Vegeta. It's nothing Roshi can't fix, though. He simply breaks the jar and Vegeta's released. If you want a quick way to deal with an evil character, just get yourself a rice cooker or something and seal them away for good. You might be able to train to be the strongest or even the fastest, but if you can control time, you can give yourself an almost immeasurable advantage. This is the chosen technique of Hit in Dragon Ball Super. Hit is an interesting fellow. Assassin by day, Hit uses the time skip technique to quickly take out his targets. He's able to move forward in time by small increments, usually by only a tenth of a second. A tenth of a second might not seem like a lot of time, but in a world where fighters can travel at the speed of sound, it's more than enough. It's revealed to us that the time skip is most effective against fighters who are about the same power level as Hit, and that the stronger the fighter is, the shorter the time skip. During his fight with Hit, Goku might be stronger than Hit, however it does not reduce the time skip by a significant amount. When the gap between them widens, Hit can evolve his time skip, and soon he's able to stop time for one-fifth of a second, and even a half second. Hit can even stop time completely should he evolve his time skip enough. We talked about this in the intro, but if you want to eradicate not only your opponent, but all of existence, there is no better way than to delete all there ever was and ever will be. This power solely rests with Lord Zeno, the Omni King and ruler of the multiverse. This little blue baby boy can rip an entire universe asunder at the drop of a hat. Just like the Destroyers, Zeno erases universes when he feels there are too many universes, which implies he doesn't create them, but another being might be responsible. We see this power demonstrated mainly during the Tournament of Power, when a universe's fighters lose, their entire reality is erased without a second thought. As if things were not problematic enough, the Tournament of Power is overseen by two Zenos, one present and one future, giving them twice the universe deleting power. All this wouldn't be so bad if the wielder of this power was a moral, responsible person. Instead, we, get, we just get that little baby, a little Goo Goo Gaga. A Goo Goo Gaga who thinks the idea of having a tournament to decide the fate of dozens of universes is fun and not depressingly existential. Having two of them only makes it worse. It took us a while, but we are finally on to the Gods of Destruction, those beings who are responsible for the destruction of hundreds of planets and represent the cyclical nature of life and death have the single most powerful energy in the known multiverse, other than Zeno, the Hakai power. Hakai, or the Energy of Destruction, is the force destroyers use to, well, destroy. Obvious powers aside, with Hakai, a god of destruction could easily level an entire planet to nothing. Beerus and other gods of destruction have demonstrated the ease at which they can erase something from existence. However, this power is not exclusive to the gods. And in fact, a few key figures are powerful enough to wield Hakai. It's shown that both Frieza and Goku can wield destruction energy. Frieza attempts to kill Goku with Hakai while Goku wields it against fused Zamasu. Such a technique is widely considered to be the most effective when it comes to destruction. While Zeno's deletion can erase an entire universe, oftentimes a scalpel is more effective than a hammer. After all, you want to still live in your universe after you've destroyed all the necessary bad guys. 
And to top off this list, we thought it would be fitting to mention a move that gave us the longest five minutes in anime history. Frieza's Death Ball. This is Frieza's ultimate attack, his strongest move and often his most fatal. With this charged energy ball literally resting on his fingertip, Frieza is able to destroy an entire planet. Granted, it's not as effective or as fast as Hakai, but in Dragon Ball Z, that concept had not been introduced or indeed invented yet. Now, this move can come in different ways. In his first fight with Goku, Frieza uses a bigger death ball that is meant to be thrown at an enemy. It's bigger and more of a pinkish purple. The other type of death ball is the planet-ending black ball of death. What's interesting to note is that this technique seems to be passed down by other members of Frieza's family, rather than it being taught. We see Chilled use the Death Ball in the DBZ movies, and no other characters in the franchise seem to use it other than Frieza's family. And those were some of the most effective moves in Dragon Ball. Which one was your favorite? Ours was the Gallic Gun. It's not the first move you'd think of, but it's a fan favorite for sure. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to see more Dragon Ball content from CBR.